Silvio Gazelle was an unconventional economist who sought to know the true nature of money. He was born in 1862 in Germany. At the age of 24, he moved to Argentina and became successful as an entrepreneur. At that time, the economic policies of South American countries were in total chaos. Argentina experienced inflation and deflation repeatedly. Accordingly, the way of life in Argentina was about to break down. Gazelle thought that a currency system and social order were deeply interrelated. Gazelle moved to Switzerland in 1900. During World War I, he published a book entitled The Natural Economic Order, in which he criticized the existing political parties, saying that they only asserted empty ideologies and did not have any concrete economic principles. Gazelle then proposed his new concept of free money. Later, economist John Maynard Keynes stated in his The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money that he believes that the future will learn more from the spirit of Gazelle than from that of Marx. Tyrol, Austria. The influence of the Great Depression, which began in 1929, cast its shadow over the district. In the 1930s, by the brave decision of the mayor of Virgil, a town located close to the German border, Gazelle's theory of free money was put into action. Even though Virgil had prospered because of its transfer station for Switzerland, Vienna, and Germany, the Great Depression brought serious recession to this small Austrian town. Production became stagnant, and unemployed people were found everywhere. The population of Virgo at that time was a little less than 5,000, while the number of unemployed reached over 400. Income from taxes dropped sharply, and the town's debt grew. Virgo was facing financial ruin. Mikhail Untenguggenberger, the mayor at that time, attributed the economic breakdown to the stagnation of money. Currency was saved and not circulated. If money does not circulate, the number of unemployed will increase, production will decrease, and consumption will slow down. To improve the situation, the mayor decided to introduce Gazelle's idea of free money. In July 1932, with the agreement of the Municipal Assembly, the town decided to issue local currency, which was only valid in that town. This action started new businesses, created work for the unemployed, and paid money with the new local currency called labor certificates. The town constructed roads and public institutions and made payments to the unemployed using the local currency. A miracle happened. The local currency, which was initially paid as salaries, rapidly started to circulate throughout the town. By circulating, money performs economic activities several times larger than its value. The town's income from taxes, which had been stagnant, started to increase steadily. The secret of rapid circulation lay in stamps pasted on the reverse side of the bills. At the beginning of every month, a consumer had to purchase a stamp costing 1% of the face value of the bill and paste it to the bill. In other words, the value of the money decreased if it was not used. Accordingly, those who possessed this bill had to use this money first. In this way, these labor certificates started to circulate one after another. The money now had the function of promoting economic activities. This money, created by Gazelle, was epic-making, since it decreased in value as time went by. The money was never saved, but continuously circulated. This local money was paid as salaries to public servants and gradually became accepted by banks. 